Okay, here's my beam where I put my pile warp on. And right here you can see that I've taken it off the spring that I usually have down in here. Where the, that's the hold break if that's on there. But this uh, turnbuckle I put over here on this egg which is actually a peg that I hold the secondary beam on and that just gives it a little bit of tension so it doesn't spin out as you're weaving and this is about 12 yards that I put on here for this uh, two towels there's four yards down here on the supplementary beam and what I did actually is I put the 12 yards on here first and then I wound it up on this top beam and then I came back and did four yards on here so I thought that was pretty easy it was just a matter of winding on after it was all on the sectional and I had a couple warp ends left over. One was misshredded here. So that ended up being that there was one repeat that I had to drop because I only had one thread to finish the repeat. So I ended up putting this here just to uh, wait it as the warp rolls off. So anyway, we are in the process of making pile towels, bath towels, and I've got along this far, I've just advanced the warp here, yeah, but you can see the, the pile and the selvage at the edge of my towel. Looks like this. Start by doing the top layer of the pile. I just pull this out. This down here. And chap two raises the pile to the top. So I just put my dowel in here. Here, moving through. So Take the wrong thread to get under or over and on the place so I clean it. That only takes just two seconds. And I have this uh, weft that I have to make sure I come under that dowel there so that when it leads it doesn't make a big loop with your weft. So that's the top of the blanket. Another shaft. So I throw my binder pick after that. That's one lead pick. And pull that in. For my bottom layer, so I'm pulling this bottom now out closest to me. And stick that under the floating selvies. The uh, top layer I go on top of floating selvies so that I don't make a loop. I don't want the uh, pile of floating selvies. So now I'm making sure that this bottom pile rod, lifting rod, goes under the floating zombies. I just place it there, just pull it in, bigger, and then now I need to get another treadle for a binder. That goes under the floating zombies on that side, and I just give it a little time on the inside. It's not going to bother the cloth pulling it a little bit, because the valves are holding the cloth to width. Now I hit another trial for another binder pick and then make sure I go under the foot of the cell on the opposite side. And I just give it a little tight, take the loop out of the selvage. And now I need one more binder pick. And that's short. That's not trial one, the other one's trial three, so I'll alternate between 
Kernel 1 and 3 for these binder things. Very handy. There's top and bottom uh, pile loops all in there. Okay, I'm putting the camera here to watch the uh, pile unwind as I'm weaving. I'll just do, uh, I don't know, four, four piles, I guess, and watch this go. along as I'm pulling on the pile so it should rotate this way so I'm just uh, going to show you there's only really four shafts here the back four are actually doing the pile and the ground weaving and these front two here are actually just doing salvages there's about seven or eight picks plus the two floating salvages that uh, these the two floating salvages are just right here not I guess I haven't got there yeah right there they're just right there and they're still nice and firm they're not slack one bit and here were I think eight nine ends left over but I had to fill the whole section in order to fill it evenly or otherwise you get problems but it wouldn't have been too big of a deal on this work because it's only four yards on that beam so nothing to be too worked up about if you only wanted to put the number needed but sometimes it's good to have an extra thread or two in case you want to uh, do a little different threading on the edge but that's the only reason why there's those extra threads here. They were just extra to fill the whole width of the section. And this loom has 10 treadles. And I do have them all tied because there's the two outside treadles there to the right. Uh, they uh, treadle my uh, hems. That's the only time I use them for this particular uh, towel is just to weave some uh, basket weave hems and otherwise they're just there and this particular bar here just keeps protection on my cloth from when I'm rubbing on the loom and weaving but as you can see the, the piles coming up pretty good This is just on the rolled edge here where you get, looks like a gap there, but it's just just because the cloth is folded. But it's, it's turned out good. And it's not hard to do. If you, you know, if you get the, the setup, like I've got a beam here that is pretty much custom made. The whole loom's custom made. I made it myself, but when you got a beam that you can just put light tension on that'll feed as you're weaving and you haven't got to worry about it that's a bonus so it's 99 percent better than waiting off the back of your loom um, i just couldn't imagine even doing it i mean if i was desperate and really wanted to try it like a narrow piece waiting it would be fine but this gringo, he wants the door easy. <laughs> <laughs>